This is a Heidelberg windmill letter press. So why do I even have this letter press? Well, let me tell you the story. Candace, who's a good friend of my wife, Amanda, they were at a meeting together and Candace asked, hey, I have a letter press, would anyone want it? And my wife goes, I do. So starts the journey of moving this thing in its current location from where it was. We first started off going over to Candace's new building in downtown Laurel, which she is renovating. Also, Candace has a pretty cool Instagram, it's right here. So we went over, it was me and Jared, my wife and kids, Jared you'll see in a little bit, went to take a look at kind of what the task was at hand. So we took a look, did a little research, come to find out this joker weighs 2,000 pounds. And so we had to get it off and out of the building, which there was about a two foot gap, two to three foot gap that we had to come out of the building with it. There were no ramps, there was no way to get it out. And so we discovered that we had a job on our hands. When we first took a look at this thing, we knew it was a piece of modern Marvel engineering. And just to see some of these things run online is just amazing. Uh, it's German engineered. It's just, it's, they call it the Prince of Presses. We're really excited to try and get this thing running. But before we do that, I feel like we should uh, have a little history lesson on these things. Jared? Well, I'd love to help you, Eric, but again, it's Gerard, not Jared. Only my former classmates at Harvard call me Jared, of course. Of course, our story begins in Germany, or Deutschland in the vernacular. It starts with Andreas Harm, an industrialist and manufacturer, who bought his brother's business in 1850. He teamed up with a man named Andreas Albert, and they formed Albert and Harm, and started manufacturing printing presses. Of course, these two blokes could not get along very well, and they ended up splitting up. And after the two friends go their separate ways, Andreas Hamm gets back into manufacturing of printing presses, only to die in 1894, to have the business taken over by his son, Carl. And what does any good trust fund baby do with the business that they've inherited with a father without any passion? They sell. And in 1905, the business becomes Schnell Pressenfabrik AG Heidelberg. And now the new company, Shell Press and Fabric, A.G. Heidelberg, sets out to build a new printing press. And they find a man in Kern named Carl Gilke in 1914. You see, the beauty of Gilke's design was it allowed you to feed paper through the machine automatically. Before Gilke, if say you wanted to print 10,000 copies of A Wealth of Nations or Les Miserables, you'd have to do each piece of paper one at a time. Very, very disheartening. And thus, the Heidelberg Platten Press, or windmill, was born. Being fully automatic, it was a model of German engineering. Thank you, Jared. That was very educational. Ahem. <clears throat> Gerard. So today, me and my little helper, we are going to Lowe's to get the supplies so that we can start building the ramp to get the letterpress out of Miss Candace's building. And then we're gonna move it to the studio. Right, bud? All right, we got the supplies. Andrew's got his Gatorade, and we are headed to try- and your airplane. And we are headed to build the ramp to try and get this joker out of here. I had to come up with a way to get it out of the building. So I figured I should call somebody who is much better at moving large things than I am. A good sculptor friend of mine, Jason Combs. Here's his Instagram. He's a really talented sculptor. Hey, Kelly. This is Jason. I was supposed to start a YouTube channel for him. Yeah. He's got hours of footage that are <laughs> never going to be seen. Doing a great job. Jason's supposed to help me move it. Here's our hole right here that we got to get it out of. That's what all the timbers were for. Oh, wow. Is it just loose? I don't know. 
She gave me the code to the lockbox. Oh, it's probably screwed together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna put this down so we can get to work. What are we thinking? I tilt it backwards and try to get the pallet under there somehow. Yeah, that's all I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to get this set up. Don't have a real good point to lift it from. Yeah. Oh, two thousand pounds of it. Easy peasy. So once we get it on the pallet, we have to build this ramp right here and then figure out how to get it down the ramp and then figure out where we're going to take it and how we're going to get it back to the studio. All right, so the plan is to try and get the jack up under this 4 by 4 and make it wide enough so hopefully the pallet slide right under there and send it up. This is not dangerous at all. All right, here we go. Hold four by four. All right, it held. Okay. Now what? <laughs> All right, that's what we got so far. Next step. Success. Yes. It's on the pallet. Well, half. Half. We're about a third of the way there. We got it on the pallet. Next process is to move it around. Jason is strapping it down to the pallet right now. Change the plans. We've decided to get it close to the edge and we have a buddy that has a uh, forklift and we think it'd be wiser to move this with a forklift instead of building a ramp and he and I trying to hold it going down. So I think that's it for today. Thanks, Jason. So when we started moving this, we realized that it was going to take a lot of work. We also realized that it was very heavy. And to move something like this, it's gonna take a lot of patience. And while we're working on it, it's also gonna take a lot of uh, thought. So as we're moving it, I was thinking to myself, Wow, this thing is a beast. At this point, something happened to my mic. I either didn't turn it on or the battery died. So from here on out, I'm gonna do some voiceover to explain what's going on. So this is Roy. Roy works for Stephen Claremont at Claremont and & Company. And at this point, we're trying to figure out how we're going to span that gap. We decided to use six by six timbers and they fit in there perfectly. So we could roll across this gap on the timbers with the forklift and then lift the press out the hole. If you notice, we decided to add an extra six by six timber next to the other one just for stability and safety. At this point, we get it out of the building. excited at this point to finally have it out of the building. Hooray! Yay! Now we had to figure out a way 
to get the press back to the studio, which was about three blocks away, but we couldn't go down the brick street because it was too bumpy. So we decided to go a different route so that we could stay on asphalt. I followed behind Roy in my little pickup truck. We're flying so fast. When we got to the studio, we realized that there was a big gap in the uh, asphalt. So we had to put down some two befores. If you can see the press is bouncing around a good bit. We decided to ratchet strap the press to the pallet and then also ratchet strap the press to the forklift. So the press could not fall forward off of the pallet. And there you go. Just like that, we had it moved. Boom goes the dynamite. Shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for that look in the sports, Brian. Yeah. Mom was happy, kids were excited. So we still have to figure out where we're gonna actually put this thing. Right now it's just in an old storage room, and we have to figure out how to get power to it. Um, and what our next steps are. Right now, I feel like our next steps are going to be cleaning it and getting someone over here to really give it a thorough inspection, someone that actually knows what they're doing. But this, is, this whole series is gonna be about our journey and process of learning how to use a letterpress from start, start to hopefully becoming an expert with it, hopefully. These are great machines, but they're not exactly a beginner's press. So we have a lot to learn and a lot to clean. We are new to this, so we're trying not to get too excited about it. We know there's a long road ahead of us. We also have to learn about all the plates, all of the components that go with this, if we're missing any parts. We know that there's a, there's a bunch of these out there and that the part there you can still get parts for a lot of this. And that's gonna be part of our journey. The parts can get very expensive, so there's gonna be a lot of figuring out where to get the parts, um, if the part we need is really what we need. Um, luckily, we have some people locally, too, that know a lot about these presses as well. And people that I've dealt with in the past just dealing with printing companies. There are many, many blogs and videos that kinda talk about these letter presses, but this is gonna be my personal journey and my wife's personal journey of bringing this thing back to life and learning how they worked, learning about it. For instance, I mean, the motor itself takes three phase power. So we've gotta clean it first, figure out if it runs, and then <laughs> there'll be an expense that will be tied to getting this thing actually up and off operational. So that's it. That's part one of us moving this beast to where it is right now. Huge shout out to everybody that helped me make this happen. Candace, Steven, Jason, Roy, all their socials will be linked below if you wanna go check them out. Oh, and Jared. I beg your pardon. Gerard. Yes. If you liked what's going on, please like and subscribe and please share it. We're really excited about this and hoping you'll follow along for the rest of the journey. Thanks for watching.